think winter time is a great time to come out and have a look at your garden. It's the best time because a lot of the stuff you've got in your garden will no doubt have died away as this is at the moment looking pretty much disheveled but still offering something to the garden. And I reckon the best way to get your garden looking great through winter is to introduce some evergreens. So I like to put in evergreen shrubs. Now because I'm still relatively new to this garden, next year or this year will be our fourth year here. So everything I've got is relatively small. Nevertheless, I've been putting in some different types of shrubs and trees that are evergreen this being one of them and I thought today I'll go through and we'll we'll look at one or two of the ones that I've got and just describe them a little bit. Now this is Taxus Bacata David and it's a really nice columnula and fairly compact yew tree although it's a yew shrub and one that I absolutely love. And I've got another one of these further up the garden. If you just bear with me, I'll show you an interesting thing that you can do to it. Definitely worth having. One that goes, it's bizarre really, because this one tends to go more green in winter. Whereas in summer, it tends to pick up some more yellowy tones. Which is unusual, because a lot of them tend to go yellow in winter. And then back to green in summer. Now right next door to it, it's another fairly green looking taxis and this is another taxis and i think it's picard i will check up on that and it's one called summer gold now this one is quite a sprawling one as you can see from that so at the moment that's what two foot and it will continue to spread and continue to get taller and again this one will go more yellow as the year moves on hopefully now you can class all yews as pines because they are technically the pine trees and they're really really nice as you can see from that I think that's absolutely stunning if you if you take the time and just have a close-up look at these things they look really nice now you've got to be careful with all taxes because they are poisonous and you must avoid giving them to animals at all because they will kill them off within a very short time if they if they do get this and eat it specifically sheep and goats they will die but that shouldn't put you off i mean i'm in a garden i ain't got no goats i ain't got no sheep in here i've got a sheep ring feeder as you can see there but i've got no sheep so i don't let that worry me now these do produce little little tiny squishy squashy red berries so from the berries you can grow new plants so that's a couple of the the taxes or the ewes and we'll show you some more as we go around so it's fairly cold today in the garden in fact it's freezing but things are coming on nicely and while we're wandering around we might as well take a look at one or two of the other bits that we've actually got going on this is looking nice now lovely flower on it that's a, an elibor and that's elibor botidus i brought this up because this is practically the time it flowers so good time to have a look at it and the same with the mahonia and that's looking fantastic at the moment there's the flowers and they do have a, a lemon scent to them which is a very very nice indeed so what else have we got well we'll go up to this one and i think this one is absolutely fantastic this one is a pinus and this one is a pinus contorta and it's one called chief joseph it is very 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 slow to grow but nevertheless it is going to reach 15 foot eventually something i have to be mindful of because really it's not in the right place I probably need to accept the fact that I'm going to have to keep this side of the plant cut away from this or create some sort of a tunnel, which I like doing anyway. So as it gets taller, I can then do a little bit of pruning to it and give it a really nice look. But it's contorted, so it's contorted. It goes all over the place. Very slow, as I said. 
so you don't need to worry too much at the beginning now it's got this wonderful color i mean that is absolutely superb i love it the way this goes and you can see this from quite a distance in the garden because of the color which is a real golden yellow color and it's just being side lit at the moment by the sun so it's looking fantastic it's looking even better now this one cost me quite a penny i had to send away for this one and when i bought it I, I seem to remember it was well over £60. When it turned up, it was literally a little twig, which quite shocked me because I thought I was going to be getting something that was about two foot tall. But nevertheless, it's doing well, and it was definitely worth the investment, and it is a beautiful. And yes, it will make up to 15 foot, but that doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And remember, these are quite easy to move while they're still relatively young. You can keep moving them around. I've probably moved this two or three times already. I'm hoping not to move it again, but never say never. Okay, let's go to this now. Now, this is a small evergreen. Let's see if we can get close up to it. I'm looking for a label as well while I'm here, but I can't find one. And this is what we call the whipcord hebe i'll put the name up online again not very big these but very very nice i like them they're evergreen so it's well worth having them in your garden i've got it in one of my perennial borders and i've actually got three of them i like it so much there you go look at that so they look nice and as i said they don't get very big I'm not sure quite how big, but I've had the one on the left there, the biggest one. I've had that here for the last three years, and that's practically all it's done. So they're not very big growing. I will look it up and put on screen the size or the eventual size that they will make. But very nice. So the sun is shining lovely at the moment. And the garden is very cold. I've been out this morning. I've done a bit of rose pruning. Good time to do your rose pruning. My shoulder is still playing up. I said I won't mention it much, but, you know, it really is causing me problems. And I've not managed to get the Telegraph Pole Pergola walkway up yet. But I've managed to get all the little bits and bobs in the garden done. Now, this is a lovely, lovely evergreen. Another pine. And this one's called Pinus nigra green tower. And it's it's quite slow growing. When I bought this one originally, which was, what, a year and a half ago, I actually snapped one of the branches off, and you can hardly tell now. There's a little bit of a gap there, but you can hardly tell now. But as I said, it is slow growing, but it will eventually make seven to eight foot an hour. So that's going to take some time, but patience is a virtue, and us gardeners need a little bit of patience. And I can't wait for that to develop. That is on that corner because I wanted it to kind of almost encourage you to walk down here up to the up to the deck and up to the boardwalk so over time that's going to look great remember evergreens are good because you can prune them quite easily and not really cause any problems if you make a mistake okay yeah you might have a gap for a few years but sometimes mistakes are good things to make they give you the unexpected so that's Pinus nigra, green tower. Superb little evergreen. Or eventually an eight foot one. So we'll climb these steps. Things are starting to come out. All the spring stuff is starting to finally make a show. We've got a bit of light. A bit of the sunshine coming in from the side. I'm trying to avoid that. Okay. So this one is Pinus mugo. And it's in the Pumella group. and But you've got to remember, although these are dwarfing pines, that they can still reach mm, possibly 11 foot up to 15. I've seen them that tall. At the moment, this one's about 5 foot. It's only been in here the three years we've been in here. But I did buy quite a big specimen, if you remember, when I put this in. And I've been doing some tree work on it and some pruning on it to give it this lovely shape. I'm hoping over time we can make that look really interesting in this border and I'll allow it to get taller and then I will select out certain branches 
to give you views through it. I hope to get it up to that 11 foot, to be quite honest. I hope it does get up to that, because it'll look really interesting. And you should never really fear letting stuff grow that tall, because at the end of the day, you can clip them back down. It's a relatively easy task to do. Now, Pinus, if it's a Pumilla, or if it's a Mugo rather, you'll know because of this. This is what we call candling. Not very tall at the minute on these. There's another one I've noticed in the garden that's got candles a bit tall. And you can see why they call it candling. They get a bit taller than that. And that, that is a very waxy finish on that. Okay. Now, pittosporums. I'm just going to mention this one pittosporum. I've got I've got two or three in the garden. In fact, I've got three in the garden. And this pittosporum is called Tom Thumb. And it's a rounded, almost dumpling kind of shape. And it has this dark look about it. And I really like it. I really do like these. I've had these in lots of gardens. And I'm very pleased with this one. I've really never, ever clipped it. Not that I can remember anyway. And it's been here ever since I got here. It's one of the first little shrubs I bought because I like them. And it sits next to this post and it looks really nice. Now, as it gets the new growth on these ones, you can just make out in there. There's a green bit. Now, when it gets new growth, it's always, always green. And then eventually it turns to this lovely purpley, red purple, I reckon that is, colour, which is fantastic. Won't cause any problems in the garden either. It doesn't get too big. I suspect that's going to make another foot, two foot maybe at the most, wide and high. But that'd be fantastic. So that's Pittosporum, and I think it's a tenuifolium. I will check that up again, called Tom Fum. Wonderful. Well, we might as well mention these, haven't we, while we're here? This is box edging. So this particular one is books of Sempervirens, and I've got loads of these, as you know, in the garden. These are evergreen, and they look superb in anybody's garden. And I use it as hedging, as you can see here. And I use it to give a little bit of interest, which is wonderful. And I'm shaping these, and eventually they're going to match into that, or they're going to meld into that hedge itself make it look more interesting. Now we'll keep this umpty dumpty looking effect. So this is Taxus Picata David. And it's not usually used for cloud pruning, but I decided I wanted to give it a go and do some cloud pruning on it. And it's turned out rather well, in my opinion. It's what, four years now I've been working on it, but it's getting there and it needs more work yet. I want those clouds to be a bit bigger and some of them I will flatten out over time but you've just got to give it a go and let it uh, do its thing and it is doing its thing and I love this kind of cloud pruning you don't need any experience to do this just use your eye and if you cock up on this one just leave it till next year and then try again you can get books on how to do this but I've been doing these types of cloud pruning for for quite some time now some years and I love doing it. So it makes a good subject for that. And again, evergreen. So it's always interesting. That's Taxus Baccata David. And you remember the one we showed you earlier was just literally a ordinary one. Never touched it and just allowed it to grow like a tower or a pinnacle. So that's quite nice. Now, I've got another Pinus which is a Mugo, or from the Pumilla group. And I think, again, it's just the ordinary one. This one I've not done as much work to. I've literally allowed it to do this. So, again, that's about four foot. Bought it quite mature. This one's also candling, and these candles are slightly bigger than the other ones. As you can see from that. Slightly taller. It'll carry on doing that for some time to come. If you want to prevent its growth, you simply take those out. And then that just stops it growing. But I just leave it alone. And I generally leave it till summer, really. So I am going to do some sort of pruning on that over time. And we'll see how it ends up. I quite like it as a shrub at the minute. But I want it to be about six, seven foot tall. And then I will start opening up areas in it to make it look more interesting. Now here's another Pumilla, another type. 
more yellow type. I can't remember where it is. The label left me a long time ago. It blew away in uh, one of the storms we had. Really, I should keep a book so that I know exactly which one it is. But it's only small. It's never really grown very big. I didn't buy it as big as the other ones, so it is relatively small. But if it does want to be bigger, I'm probably likely to take it out and move it on. Now, as we're here, we might as well show you another Pittosporum. And this is a tenue folium, and this one's called Garnetii. And the way you can tell whether you've got Garnetii, and I know now that one or two more plants have the same look, but I suspect they come through this, is they have this kind of a pink tinge to the edge of the leaves. I think you can just make that out. And again, this is an evergreen. Now, be careful with Pittosporums, because Pittosporums can die away in a winter. In most of our winters, that should be absolutely fine. And at the moment, it's looking really nice. I'm, I'm, I've put it here deliberately. I like to put little things like this at entrances of paths on corners. They just look good and interesting. And that one again, that one's been moved several times. And the reason I moved it was because I needed it in a more sheltered position. So I've put it down here near the wildlife dip pools. So it will stand a lot better chance at surviving. Well, really, let's have a look at this. Look at that. That's beautiful. And that's the corkscrew hazel. Beautiful winter silhouette at the moment. Absolutely fantastic. I love that one. Anyway, right, let's move on. So, yeah, evergreens. Here's another Books of Sempervirens, and I've made this edge here. And remember, I moved this last summer to create a more interesting section here. And what I do with my ones is I give them this, what's that called? A pyramidal clipping, which always looks nice. And in this instance, that's going round in a semicircle. It just looks so interesting. And the best thing about books is, is that it makes the garden look interesting straight away because it is evergreen. Now, I know a lot of people suffer from box blight, box caterpillar, etc. We're up in Lincolnshire on the Lincolnshire Wolds. And touch wood, as of yet, we're not really suffering these problems at all. They tend to have that more south than we are. So we haven't really experienced I have seen it in gardens, having said that, but it's not really widespread. So this is another pit sporum, and I keep this one in this lovely green bucket. And the reason I keep it here and next to the wall is that it's definitely not as hardy as all the other pit sporums. So one or two of them really, really don't like our English winters. But I got this one relatively cheap. In fact, I think I was given it. And I've grown it on and it was probably only six inches tall when I was given it. And it's doing okay now. It's probably a foot and a half to two foot now. And it has this look about it when it gets going. So as summer comes, it will go a paler green, like those little leaves you can see. And through winter, it turns to these more darker green, but it has this like mottling in it. And this this one is a tenuifolium again, and it's one called Margaret Turnbull. So look that one up. It is a nice one. And don't get me wrong, it is worth having. But just be careful, because they're not all solidly hardy. So this is an interesting one. This is an evergreen. And I call it Bob Marley. Sometimes I give plants a, a comical name. And this you can see why I call it Bob Marley. And this one is actually a Thuya, Thuya plicata. And one called Whipcord. Now eventually it will make three and a half by three and a half feet. And continue with that weird looking growth that you can see there but it's really nice really interesting don't dismiss these types of plants because they're fantastic just give them time give them a chance and try them in your garden especially this one you can see i've got it in a bucket at the moment but when i bought it it was very very small these are available in garden centers i got this from a garden center and i'm not that keen on going to garden centers i prefer to go to nurseries but sometimes garden centers are the only places you can go to get this type of plant. So I really like this, but in time, that's gonna be put into the garden and allowed to grow away. 
and it's very, very nice indeed. I just like it. I just like the wackiness. I like wacky stuff, and that's very wacky. So we'll move on now and to what I think will be the last one. You've heard that before. So we're likely to finish on this one. And again, it's another Taxus. And this, this one here is a very small and very, very slow-growing one. And it's an English U, this one. Very slow to grow. Columnular will only get to about one and a half feet wide, eventually. Up to about, I'd say, four or five feet, eventually. It has this lovely yellow look most of the time. It gets better as summer comes along, actually, this one. And again, it looks like your typical Texas Bacata. A bit like David, what we saw earlier. But the difference with this one and that one is David is... Definitely faster than this one to grow. This one is very slow. So if you're looking for something very slow, that one would make a good choice. So yeah, Taxus Bacata Standishii. I've got two of those. I've got another one in here, which is more shaded. And as you can see from here, it's not as yellow. So the sun helps it to yellow up a bit. If it gets a bit more brightness, that's what happens greener like that but nevertheless very good plants indeed so what i'd say about pine trees although they they fell away from fashion some time ago and i don't think they ever regain that fashion is i would definitely consider getting them there's some very interesting plants out there for you to choose from and every now and again i go into the garden centers and i have a look see if there's some unusual one some wacky one that i would like to add to my collection the problem with them is is that the most wacky and unusual ones are the ones that cost the most so i tend to only get one now and again and sometimes you find a plant or you see a plant on the telly you fancy you look for it and you can't find it in the garden centers in that case i suggest you just do a search online and it should come up trumps for you like this one did for me in actual fact, I think I found this in a garden centre. I couldn't believe it when I found it because it's quite hard to get hold of. And that one's Green Tower, Pinus Nigra Green Tower. Beautiful. I wish I'd bought two. They did have two, but I couldn't afford the other one at the time. So we ended up with one, but I love it. When, when funds permit, maybe we'll look at getting another one. So yes, consider getting a pine. Don't think of the 70s when everybody was buying them and... They were horrible because they were overdoing it. They weren't putting them in. They weren't mixing them into borders. They were simply doing a bank of conifers of some description. And they look terrible like that. You've got to really mix them into a mixed perennial border or put them into an interesting place like this one here. Chief Joseph. Pinus contorted, Chief Joseph. Now, if I had to choose any one of the plants I've just been showing you, I think that's the one I would tell you to get that one there it's fantastic i love it so there you go a little talk on some evergreen shrubs in particular the pines but one or two others as well hope you've enjoyed that and i hope it's been informative any questions fire away and that'd be brilliant talk to you soon ta -da.